My name is Sebastian and in this video we're gonna have a coding session with AI with the chat GPT tool and we're gonna see how helpful it is for our job as developers. So in the last days and weeks you've probably have seen that on social media, this tool that is powered by AI and you can ask it all sorts of questions, especially coding questions and to generate, well, some, some source code. And well, it would give you some answers. And with this, that's actually very interesting um, how this is being built up and also that it can code in some sort. And to start it off, we will just, you know, you've probably have seen such an example the, this is the JAD application. We can just ask it, for example, write a Java Hello World application. And then it will just generate some code. Of course, with that, you have to be careful because not always is the code correct. And it will come up with some sometimes interesting or weird answers. Well, also to be fair, in a similar way, if you would go to Stack Overflow, very often the answers aren't correct or you need to double check and uh, things like that. But that it can come up with an answer that already gives you the explanation as well is actually very interesting and I think pretty impressive. Okay, but we don't want to do hello world that's boring. We actually want to see how it can help us as developers. Now, uh, first of all, I want to say if you're worried about AI taking away your jobs, I can say don't worry. I mean, first of all, this thing does the same uh, mistakes as some uh, junior uh, developer or a person who doesn't know what they do would do. And also actually quite obviously with programming languages. As always, if you use any programming language, you have to be very specific and precise what you want to do. And the quite definition of something that describes a program or application up to the last detail is in fact a programming language. So it has happened since the beginning of computers that programming languages get more and more abstract and we build upon each other. And you know, it's much faster nowadays to write an enterprise application that does some database transactions than it was 30 years ago. So that's just a normal, uh, well, evolution of time and evolution of things. Of course, this is a big jump in AI that it can help us to be more effective. And this is what we want to have a look at. So for example, if I have some Java application, I will give you some Java examples that deals with coffee. So I have my coffee shop application that is also a part of a video course I have for effective testing. Now we want to see how this can help us actually by just testing or uh, by examining this application. And the first thing I want to show you where this AI tool can really shine is to create some test data or any sort of data where you have a lot of permutations or where it needs to generate and come up with some examples or some things. For example, you could say, um, I would like to have some example data, let's refresh this, that just would create some CSV files. So for example, write a CSV file of English names in the format, and then you could go, uh, for example, full name, uh, first name, surname, date of birth. Let's also provide some formatting. So as you will see, you can actually be very specific here already and it hopefully will come up well with something. Let's see. Um, just to notice this, these examples, I mean, I've tried them a few times, but of course you always come up with some slightly different things. So if you insert the very same text, you might and will come up with a different answer or especially if you change um, some things in, in wording, then it will just generate something else for you. I mean, this is not a program per se, a regular one. This is this um, AI software that then uses these approaches. Okay, so now I have already a CSV file now with three entries. And also what you can do and what I really encourage you to try out if you try this tool is to make use of the conversational tone so that now I started something, I asked a question and gave me a response and now you can follow up. So having a follow up question is to say, oh yeah, that was already quite nice. Nice, but uh, can you make it uh, with 10 entries? So I like this. I want to have exactly that, but now just with more data. And then it can come up with some more example things that then you can use. And as you can see, it's already kind of interesting because it. Um, I just wrote, you know, I didn't provide anything. I wrote full name, first name, surname. And it did create a full name out of first and surname. So, you know, whether or not that makes sense uh, to you. 
And now that's also um, interesting because we could even make some sort of simple calculations or some sort of obvious or logical things here. For example, um, thanks, but now change the format to, and now what I would like to do, I would like to add the age. And now the age, um, age as of today, and just sometimes it has issues with that. I just include uh, the current date. And then let's see what it will calculate. I hope that it will calculate actually the well number of years. And if you double check that as of uh, 2022, that should actually be correct. Um, which is kind of interesting already because I only provided this string as you know to say give this format and then it tried to come up with something clever and you know as you um, see this is uh, sort of correct they are arbitrary um, would depend on specific names okay here it already explains you know it adds some disclaimer but as we can see oh, okay it looks correct you know as always as I said you want to double check but especially to get started or to create some test data you know that you then can use this is just perfect because you know it um, makes you generate these things much faster much more efficiently so we can say okay great um, we can now have a thing like that and again, you can come up with some sort of explanation where you say date of birth, you know, in a specific format, and it will come up with something, you know, uh, more or less usable. Let's um, try this one more time with some coffee example that I will show you also with, with some code examples in a, in a second. So now we would say um, write a CSV file of uh, coffee beans. So assuming I want to have my coffee example where we say we have something like a you know, coffee, bean coffee uh, that you can order as beans that then you can use uh, to make coffee. Uh, for example, to say, well, bean name, and then um, let's get rid of this first. Something like, I have a coffee bean that comes from a specific country. Then we see, okay, which countries will it actually generate for us? And then something like, okay, we have a roast. Um, and now I say one off, and you know, the syntax, how you want to write it, of course, you can write it in almost any way, it's, that's of course trial and error, how it works. Let's say I would like to have some um, light roast, uh, some medium roast, and then some other uh, things like medium dark, and then um, flavor, and something just a sweet flavor or um, a fruity flavor or chocolatey or nutty flavor, something like this and then just see what that does. So that's also interesting. Let's see what that um, creates for us. And we see that we also have some interesting names. So it, it adds something about the country. So it, you know, I, I think it's, it sounds really, so, sounds legit. And it inc included some example data, for example, one medium roast, light roast, and with just, you know, some permutation of things. So especially if you're very specific in of saying, okay, I want to have data in exactly this format, then it can work really well for that. And then you can say, okay, you know, just add some other criteria and with some more obvious things like here, the country, or you can add the continent or as we had the age, then it would just come up with something, you know, that is already sort of usable. And especially to get started, this is really helpful for the test data. Okay, so that's about test data, which I found quite helpful. But what about actual code? So if we say, well, we would like to generate or use some code, is it actually helpful? Or is it just, you know, creating some some garbage? Now with that, it depends, of course, and we will see and you probably will get different results if you try it yourself. But now I would like to um, just, you know, try this out if it could come up with some test code. And especially that's going to um, be something that we're going to look at because it's quite interesting to see how does it deal with this uh, test code situation because quite obviously with production code you might to be you might want to be a little bit more careful because then you need to double check it well as always so the same if you go to stack overflow and copy and paste code you always need to double check to see what are you inserting there and here it's no different of course, sometimes you come up with really weird answers where you say, okay, this doesn't even work or this doesn't compile 
unfortunately still. So let's try this out. We take the code and copy and paste it and then also put it into the chat window. But now for this example, I already prepared it and we'll show some screenshots because unfortunately sometimes the, the chat is a little bit buggy and then we'll just crash if it has a long response. But basically what I ask, I hope you can read that, the following Java class offers business methods to manage coffee orders, coffee drink types and coffee origins. You don't even have to give such a, a long backstory. But what I did with the markdown syntax, um, I pasted the Java code and then ask, okay, please at the end, write a test class using JUnit Mokito and SRJ that validates all methods with various permutations and test scenarios. And then what it came up with is actually something that looks kind of in uh, interesting and something similar that I would come up with, with while well, playing JUnit. But if you have a closer look at it and try to um, zoom in, it is now a little bit um, not that nice to read, but you get the idea. It will set up these uh, dependencies and then invoke some coffee shop, but you will see that this actually, the constructor, it doesn't exist. So it came up with some arbitrary code, probably based, some, uh, based on some other examples that you find online if you use constructor-based uh, injection, which here we don't have, we use field injection. And actually it got the field injection. So, you know, it could have known. So you see, it makes just some, some different mistakes. So if you uh, take and copy and paste this code, it doesn't fully work. But I would say also, you know, it's a, it's a good start, you know, fair enough, because then you just change some things. You, you will obviously see all of the compilation errors and you can try it out. And it's just a test, you know, like uh, what, what, what could go wrong basically. Um, and then you can um, see what is uh, doing there as well. So for example, if you say, here is the, the test method, test get origins, and then the next, uh, next one here of saying, what does it do? And it didn't have the code for this other origin class and, and things like that. So again, I hope you can, I can read this in the video, but you get the idea. It will create some stuff that just looks like um, a test and actually will uh, do some sophisticated or some some interesting things. So I would say sometimes it's it's um, helpful to get started to just say, OK, what does it do then? But now there's more uh, to that. So now what we can also say, and this is kind of interesting because it uh, it uses this approach of say, well, you know, ask better questions and you will get better answers uh, where we say, OK, instead of having that, um, we could come up with some more constraints and, for example, make use of some delegates and abstractions that we build up in our test code. So, for example, this is something that I talk about um, in, well, the, the content that I do and I have a video course on the topic of efficient testing, if you're interested in that, link down below, where I say it's really important to have also proper test score quality in your test scope and to come up with delegates. So, for example, what I have in this use case test in my well, test uh, project is to say I make uh, sure, uh, sure I use some test doubles, which here are just classes that either extend my production code or just, you know, and um, extend and enhance it in some other way that then can be used as part of your test. Now, the interesting thing with uh, the, the jet AI is can we use that? And yes, we can actually. And it's, it really makes sense because the better questions you ask, the better of an answer you will get. So what we can do, um, let's see, I say the following two test classes are test doubles used in test scenarios as delegates to improve a better test code quality. So write another test for the coffee shop, this time using the two, these two test doubles. And then I just paste it in what you just have seen, this coffee shop test double, and um, then also a um, barista, no, it's called uh, order processor test double. So basically I just pasting some Java classes with all of this stuff. So for you to understand, that's this one and that one, which are two test uh, doubles that then should be used as dependencies and they uh, make sure they set up all of the mocking here. So my test gets a much more readable and more maintainable and what the test should do. So that's well, what I would like to have should come up with something like this. And it's kind of interesting that um, the AI example created uh, pretty much that. So we just um, zoom this correctly so you can um, read it maybe. Here's an example test that uses these two test doubles to test a coffee shop class. And then it came up with actually something that looks very, very similarly. We say, okay, it will create these two dependencies. It had a look or, you know, 
it saw the constructors so it uh, might um, just invoke them correctly and then we have test process unfinished orders and what you see here is very similar of course it didn't know which coffee types or so and origins it had so it just guessed but then you see the methods answer for unfinished orders, process unfinished orders and verify processed unfinished orders, which is actually exactly what we have here. So we have some yet another um, method or class to create these test orders. But then, you know, we could provide that as well and you could go on and on. But just that it will invoke these correctly is kind of interesting because it only got the name. So it doesn't know what they are doing. Of course, you could explain it, but well, you don't even have to. It's kind of like if it um, uses the schema that you would expect from a test, especially this given, when, then, and things like that, like verify and the business methods, then it here just came up with the similar example of or similar thing that actually works here. So it says, okay, um, the process unfinished orders, for example, that's the business method. And these two are just the test double methods to set it up and to verify it later. So this already worked. So it came up um, with some uh, example here. And it's quite interesting, especially from my experience, also by playing around with it, the more um, constraints you give. So the more boundaries uh, you set up to say, OK, do this, but exactly in this format or using these other delegate classes, the, uh, the better code it will create for you. And now let's have um, one more example at a different technology. Now we're going to use Cucumber and some Cucumber tests with some step definitions that um, you can provide as such with this sort of syntax. And then you can have a Cucumber Gherkin syntax feature file. It looks something like that, where we say validating coffee orders. And then I would like to create some orders in a specific um, way, maybe in a parameterized way or um, outlining several scenarios. So what you can do, you can also take these step definitions and say, well, just please create some um, cucumber tests. So I've tried that as well. I said, here's a um, cucumber step definition class and just paste it in the step uh, definitions again as Java code and then say, OK, please uh, create a cucumber test code that validates the acceptance and rejections of coffee orders for a variety of data and then well, it uh, comes up with some interesting uh, things. So first of all, it actually invokes these methods, which, well, yeah, works, but that's not really what I what I plan to do. So that's also interesting. And then you say, no, you want a Gherkin syntax that you can put into this feature file. So that's usually how you would use this technology. And then it came up with something, well, that does work. And it says, okay, uh, valid, validate an order with uh, valid types and invalid types. So it says, okay, mocha, for example, is, is not an, a valid um, a coffee type. So interesting in, in my project, that's also the case, but you know, it can come up just with some data and you can even be more specific and follow up. So as I said before, really use this conversational um, type or the structure of this chat application to say, OK, this was good, but now just please change that where then you say afterwards, OK, now use the parameterized Gherkin way with more test scenarios. So here say, OK, hmm, interesting, validate coffee, blah, 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 blah. And you, as you can see, it comes up with a very similar um, example of this Gherkin syntax that I have in my project where we say, OK, th then this, you know, creates a similar scenario and use these examples. From experience, of course, you need to double check if it really works. Sometimes it makes weird mistakes that look nice, um, but then don't actually work or don't compile. So you, you need to check that. But even just coming up with these examples, this can be, you know, already a task where you say, OK, I cannot think of so many permutations to so just tell it, as we've seen before in the CSV fashion to generate that. So this works here quite nicely. If you're not using this Cucumber um, technology, but plain JUnit, OK, you can also have some uh, other approaches. So here, for example, I pasted in some other code of a project uh, that I have. This following class should capitalize titles and, you know, please generate a unit test for this with various uh, test uh, data. So just coming up with various test data, which here was just strings, um, which is kind of interesting. So it did uh, work in some way. And then you can say, OK, nice. Now generate a parameterized test. So these JUnit parameterized tests that reads from a CSV file and generate a CSV file with, you know, 100 test scenarios like this. And that's kind of cool because then it really comes up with a um, well parameterized JUnit test that then reads here from a file in a CSV fashion. So you can uh, try this out yourself. And then 
uh, paste the uh, CSV file there where you say, okay, here, and then the uh, CSV file um, can be added as well. And as we've seen, it can come up with such a CSV file. So, you know, you can play around with it, especially with these test uh, permutation data. That's kind of interesting. So as another example, now what I want to do is even to generate a whole Java project, which I often use in my um, enterprise projects as to say, for example, I have some sort of um, resource here, like an endpoint, for example, this checks rest resource that then will specify some rest uh, resources here that then you can take and say, okay, for that, please generate a system test project, which usually should be a standalone project that tests the application using, using HTTP and other means in a well standalone in an isolated way. So uh, sort of like a black box. And with this, you can even say the following is a JAXRES class that defines HTTP endpoints for an application that we want to test with a system test. So now do this and then please create a Java system test project. So a whole project with Maven Java JAXRES client J unit that connects our application running under localhost 8080 and tests the business use cases. Okay. And then it will come up with something like to create a Java system test project and, you know, with different steps. So again, you can follow up and say, okay, now please create a Maven project. Yeah, whatever. I know how to do that, but then create a Java class, you know, for your system to annotate and so on um, and so forth. And then you can say, okay, now please implement the test code described in steps four to six, you know, create this and then add that and create test methods and, and so on and so forth. So it will come up with something that already generates, you know, this is a plain G unit test that's sort of boring, but then you can say, okay, it will fill this uh, with life as well. And then it already will come up with something base URL uses these checks to rest APIs that I was just describing and then saying, okay, then please create the test methods here and saying, okay, Chris, uh, create um, order and um, it will use JSON create object builder. So actually quite similar to what we would do um, in a system test. And while well, we can even, you know, have a look at our uh, code, if I would go to a system test uh, project and say um, here, I would like to now use some sort of um, system test that goes against the back end. Let me show just very quickly. Uh, create order test. So in our example, we again make use of delegation, but then we could tell this or use this here as well, where um, the actual usage of this JAXRS client is outsourced in another class. But then here also, you know, we're creating uh, JSON and things like that. So what I would do or what can be kind of interesting is to just prompt some questions like that, take the uh, code, copy and paste it, and then see, first of all, what works or which junks uh, do work or maybe all of it, and then go and take and, well, of course, refactor and fix it, where then we say, okay, you know, there is some value in these things because that already helps you to get started faster. So you don't need to create everything uh, from scratch. You can say, okay, just generate the structure and then see what uh, you end up with and you can uh, refactor faster. So that's kind of interesting. And as we have seen, um, the more specific you are in asking questions, the better answers you get. So especially just using these test code uh, data with CSV uh, structures and these specific formats that you can uh, give it is already kind of interesting. You can ask follow up questions. You can say, okay, this was cool now, plus just, just change that and so on and so forth to come up with something that, that really can help you. So it's really interesting to play around with it. I especially uh, would look at it from a test scope perspective as to say, it's helpful to, you know, create something like test scenarios to use your production code and create some permutations for it, or to create permutation with test data. So all of these things, again, the more specific you are, the better um, answers you will get. So I found it really interesting to play around with it. If you have some other interesting or helpful things that you can use and generate with this AI tool, I'm really curious um, to know them. So please uh, put them into the comments. If you like this topic of efficient testing in general, I have a video course on that also linked down below. And if you found this entertaining, I would really appreciate a like. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.